In Australia today, there are some very sick people with direct access to the children of the country and they're doing some perverted things and it's only going to get worse until people start to recognize what's being done, why it's being done and how to stop it. And in this video, I'll show you what's being done, how it's being done and I'll also explain to you how easy it would be to stop it. I'm John Lebon, it is the 19th of August, 2016, a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Brisbane, Australia. And this video today is all about a recent controversy here in Australia regarding what's being taught to children. So what we're going to do is go through that particular controversy, or at least the surface level of it, then look at some of the characters who are involved, what they're doing, and then we'll go from there. So let's start off. This is an article from The Australian, a Rupert Murdoch newspaper, and the article is entitled Kids 5 in Sex Change Stories Uni Research Trial. And this one was printed or published on August 16. And as you can see here, there's a book called My New Daddy, written by Lily Mossianio. And we'll come to that in a moment. And you've got a couple of boys sitting there and they're saying that mummy sat down with me and explains to me that nature made a mistake and she should have been a boy like me. After some time, my new daddy went to see Dr. Voltaire again. He needed to have an operation to make him become a boy like me. Now I am a lucky little boy because my mummy is my new daddy. He will always love me and I will always love him. An extract from my new daddy. Now what is this utter filth, garbage and nonsense? Well, would you believe they're actually reading this to little children here in Australia? 20 years ago, nobody would have believed you. 10 years ago, they would have thought you were being a little bit eccentric or exaggerating. Today, apparently this is normal. Well, let's hope not for too much longer. Let's look at this article here. Quote, Children as young as five have been used for storytime sessions featuring books with transgender characters, introducing concepts ranging from cross-dressing to gender reassignment surgery as part of a university study being used to advocate for the expansion of the Safe Schools program into primary schools. A Flinders University research team has recommended the Gender Diversity Program, the curriculum of which is designed for years seven and eight, be rolled out to South Australian primary schools despite a report acknowledging many of the students who participated in the study had struggled to understand some of the narratives. As part of the research project, funded by Flinders University and the Australian Research Council, six picture books featuring transgender characters were read to prep and grade one students over five sessions. One of the books, My New Daddy, written by transgender author and LGBTI rights advocate Lily Mossianio, follows the tale of a young boy who is told by his mother that nature made a mistake and she should have been a boy like him. Mummy begins transitioning and Charles calls her daddy, says the blurb for the book. Daddy goes to see a doctor and has an operation. Charles now has a new daddy who loves him and he loves daddy. The US author has published a similar book, My New Mummy, which was also read to the students along with When Kathy is Keith, and the autobiographical I Am Jazz, which also includes medical themes and language. End quote. Now, you might be wondering, was that article legitimate? Is this article from a legitimate newspaper or from a, a mainstream newspaper? The answer is yes, The Australian is a mainstream newspaper. It is uh, a News Corp publication, so old Uncle Rupert at the very top of that. And of course, what the social justice warriors and the programs morons will tell you is, well, you can't believe this. It's it's the Murdoch newspapers. You can't believe them. And they've got the story half right. Uh, it is quite true that you shouldn't trust or have faith in uh, any of the Murdoch publications. They're not your friends. They're not here to help you. But the same is obviously true of all mainstream publications. So what you can do is read an article and then go and double check some of the claims for yourself. So what we'll be doing in the rest of this video is doing something akin to that. Before we go further though, it's important to establish a couple of the key people involved in this story. So let me read you out another quote from the article. Quote, the experiment was part of a broader research project that culminated in a recent report exploring trans and gender diverse issues in primary education in South Australia by Claire Bartholomew, Damien Riggs and Yarrow Andrew. The project was supported by the South Australian Division of the Safe Schools Coalition, which helped to distribute surveys to teachers and teaching students. Dr. Bartholomew and Professor Riggs have conducted extensive research on LGBTI issues, 
While Professor Riggs is national convener of the Australian Psychological Society's interest group on gay and lesbian issues and the editor of its journal, The Gay and Lesbian Issues and Psychology Review. A single class of 21 students took part in the project, which had ethics approval from the Adelaide-based university, as well as parental consent. The report details some of the children's reactions to the stories, which ranged from he wants to wear a dress like girls, so he said, I want to be a girl, to I liked the story because the mum turned into a boy. Some seems to be confused, however, saying, I didn't understand, is it a boy or a girl? End quote. Now, that's the general overview of the story. And many people uh, in my country, especially people my age, they'll say, well, you can't trust the story because it comes from the Murdoch publications. It comes from News Corp. And of course, you can't trust anything that comes from the mainstream media, no matter whether it's Murdoch or Fairfax or anybody else. All they can do is give you some ideas of where to go and do further research. And then you make up your own mind from there if you're a smart person. So what we're going to do right now is take this overview of a story and go and look into some of the characters who are involved to see what more we can find out. So let's start off with this book, shall we? My New Daddy, written by Lily Mossiano. Well, who is Lily Mossiano? Well, here we go. Lily Mossiano, author, advocate, public speaker. And this is from liliswordpress.com. Let's read her about, shall we? Who is Lily Mossiano? Lily Mossiano is the author of the books My New Mummy and My New Daddy. She is a transgender woman, a geek at heart, and an advocate for the rights of all LGBT people. She's working hard to put books out there to help the next generation be conscious of the existence of and respect for transgender individuals. She is currently working on several new additions to the My New series and wishes to spread the word and educate the public on the struggles of being both a transgender woman and a transgender parent. She wants to bring hope to those who are losing their internal struggles with depression and or mental illness due to the situations they cannot control, i.e. being gay, lesbian, queer or transgender, as well as remind the youth of today that it gets better. She is available for public speaking events for a nominal fee and hopes to start going on tours to bookstores to sign her works. Should you wish to have her travel to your event or school, please contact her using the form provided here. Stay tuned for a list of appearances and events. And that is Lily Mossiano there. So we get a basic idea of who Lily is there, but I wasn't happy with that. I wanted to learn a little bit more information about Lily since her books about men becoming women and vice versa are apparently being read to innocent children in this country. I thought it was worth learning a little bit more about Lily. And I found this, a different wordpress.com uh, under the name geekanomaly.wordpress.com. And there she is again, Geek Anomaly about. Let's read this about, shall we? We've just read the one that's nice for uh, if you want to buy a book of lilies or you've just heard about her. Who is this man or lady or what have you? Well, it's white and it's pink and it sounds all very professional and eloquent. Let's look at this one, though, from her Geek Anomaly. WordPress. Let's read this about, shall we? Quote, When will I be able to look into the mirror and see who I am inside finally on the outside? This is something that I sit and question each and every day of my life. You see, I was born inside a male's body, but I am far from a male. I was born in a small town in North Carolina to a family that never really understood me. Growing up was a difficult time for me. Inside, I wanted to play with dolls, makeup, and with all the little girls. I wanted to wear dresses and have long hair that I could style into cute pigtails with purple ribbons. My mother tried her best, I would like to think, but she was so indoctrinated into her religious beliefs that anything that veers slightly off from those beliefs is not just wrong, but it is considered a work of the devil. It was for the love of a woman, a love I have found I will never have, that I tried so desperately hard to conform to what she told me I should conform to. All through sick school, I struggled with who I was. This struggle turned me into a very angry, dark person. A person that was so far from who I was inside that I would stay away from the mirror just so that I did not have to see myself. I watched each and every misogynistic flick that I could get my hands on in a misguided attempt to emulate what I thought the quintessential man was. End quote. And it just goes on and on like that. I recommend you check it out for yourself if you can tolerate it. But here's the part down the bottom. 
I am Lily Mossiano, the geek anomaly. Come join me on the journey of a lifetime. I cannot guarantee happiness, but I can promise fun adventure just like the doctor. So there you have it, a slightly less endearing about page for Lily. We have someone who openly admits that they were very troubled right from their earliest days, apparently raised in a religious household, went against that. If you read the full about, you'll find they went back to the religion. And then finally, someone said, actually, you're just a, a man in a woman's body. That's your problem. Let's fix that. And here we are today with Lily Mossiano, writing books which are, as we've already established, being read to children in primary schools. And not only that, but they want to roll that out to be a more common thing. Reading out to children, five and six-year-old children, books written by people like this. That should be enough for you, any good person sitting there to say to themselves, you know what, I have to do something. I cannot sit by or stand by and let this happen because this is utterly perverted and utterly sick. Any good person, any moral person hasn't been completely brainwashed into stupidity should be thinking there's something wrong here. I have to do something. But it actually gets a lot worse than all of this. All we've done so far is look at Lily Mossiano's About Pages. Let's find out a little bit more about Lily and the people who are promoting her work, shall we? This is from the Huffington Post, and the article is entitled, Lily Mossiano, my new series author, talks about books and being a Southern transgender parent from the 2nd of February, 2016. And there's another photo of Lily Mossiano. That's the kind of person who's writing books for children to read at schools, apparently. Now, you can read this article for yourself. Obviously, I always provide the links to all of the sources that I use for my videos, and you can find those in the info box below, and of course, at the relevant post on johnlebon.com. For the sake of brevity, I just wanna read out this particular part of the article. The question to Lily was, do you think that trans people have a responsibility to children understand what it means to be transgender? And I think they mean to help children understand what it means to be transgender. What's with the copy these days? I don't get it. But anyway, this is Lily's apparent response. Quote, I think everybody has a responsibility to educate the next generation. If you go back through history with racism, the only way we can really exterminate racism is educating the next generation so that we can stop it. And when it comes to transphobia and homophobia, the only way that I think we as a community can stop it is if we take it upon ourselves instead of fighting with the radicals or the extremists. Don't fight with them. We set an example and we educate. That way the children understand as they're growing up that there's nothing really wrong with these people. These people are not any different than they are. They have different views and they do different things, but they are still human beings. So that's the only way that acceptance can actually come about through education, end quote. Now, there are a few things there that are worth taking a second look at. The most obvious one to me, anyhow, is the similarities between this and the sort of things that George Orwell wrote about in his books, particularly Animal Farm, where the leaders take the children and indoctrinate the children. And that way, by the time they become adults, they're the new bearers of light, if you like. It's all about taking the children, training the children to believe what you believe, and then the rest will take care of itself. And that's exactly what Lily is talking about with this quote. But not only that, look at the hypocrisy there. She says, don't fight with the radicals or the extremists. In other words, don't engage with people who disagree with us. And when she says radicals or extremists, you have to understand that people like me should include me as a radical and extremist. And if you personally don't like the idea of teaching children about transphobic parents in picture books, you'd be considered a radical or an extremist by these kinds of people. And that might seem quite outrageous to you, especially if you've never been to a university or you haven't been there for a little while. You'd say, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't call me an extremist. They'd, they'd argue with me. No, they wouldn't. If you don't agree with them, you're an extremist, you're a radical, or you're a bad person. And so in the very same response about educating children where they say that it's important to teach the children that these other people, they're different, they do different things, but they're people just like us, so long as they agree with us. The people who disagree with us, they're radicals and they're extremists. The hypocrisy is dripping from this response. And this is typical of people like Lily and those who promote her. Again, links provided in the info box below. Go and read this article for yourself. I recommend that you do.
So what we've done so far is we've looked at the original article, which talks about how this stuff is being taught to children at schools. It was just a trial, but they want to roll it out further. We've looked at the author of the book, their official about page, then another about that people might not be so familiar with. And then we've looked at some responses that Lily gave to the Huffington Post in an interview earlier in the year. What I want to do now is look at Flinders University. They're the ones who carried out the uh, trial with the children that uh, instigated this video. And if you go to flinders.edu.au, you'll find a page all about inclusive language. Now, Flinders University is not one of our more prestigious universities in Australia. We've got about 40 universities. Flinders is uh, not even ranked in the top 300 in the world, I think. Several Australian universities are. But that said, they're still a university. There are still people going and, and learning things there. And they are indicative of what's being taught around Australia at our tertiary institutions. So let's go through this page here, Inclusive Language Guide. Let's have a look at some of the things they say are appropriate and inappropriate. For instance, referring to things as the Stone Age, saying that certain cultures are from the Stone Age, inappropriate. The more appropriate thing to say is that they're from complex and diverse societies, you see? So uh, that culture over there who didn't even have the wheel, you can't say that they are of the Stone Age, but you can say that they are from a complex and diverse society. Okay, fair enough. We don't want to offend anybody here. Let's keep moving on. Uh, inappropriate language is saying things like husband and wife. Uh, appropriate is partner. So this is my wife and uh, she's a lovely wife and she takes care of our children. Not appropriate. This is my partner. That's appropriate. Okay, I hope you guys are getting the message here. Let's move on to language and gender. Inappropriate terminology is things like man, mankind, spokesman, chairman, workmanship, man the desk. Appropriate is humans, humankind, spokesperson, chairperson, quality of work, skill, attend the desk phones, language and disability, disabled toilets, inappropriate, universal access toilets, appropriate, the disabled, inappropriate, people with disabilities, appropriate. Again, the, the ties between this and what Georgia was writing about with Newspeak and this kind of thing, it's so obvious how people could read that book, see this, and not see the direct relationship. It's beyond me. Now, those are just a few examples. You can go and check for more for yourself, but this is the kind of cultural Marxist nonsense that is being taught to students studying sociology degrees or arts degrees or social science degrees, these kinds of things. This is what's being taught to them at university today, and it has been this way for quite a few years now. So a lot of people who went to university then went on to become teachers, they're teaching your children right now, believing this kind of stuff. You need to keep that in mind. So we've looked at Lily, the author of the book. We've looked at Flinders University, who were responsible for the study of teaching Lily's book or showing Lily's book to innocent five and six-year-old children. Who were the people themselves behind that uh, research or that study though? Well, one of them was a lady named Claire Bartholomew. You would have heard that name when I read out the article earlier on. So who is Claire Bartholomew? Well, this is from theconversation.com, which is like a, an online article repository where uh, academics and other people post articles that are meant to stimulate a conversation, I suppose. You could definitely call it progressive. And uh, let's just read this out. Quote, my main current area of research is examining trans and gender diverse issues in primary education, including an examination of picture books with trans and gender diverse characters. I'm also working on a number of projects with colleagues at Flinders University and the University of South Australia. These include projects examining the use of space in a purpose-built mental health unit for mothers and babies, family diversity and parenting, and the engagement of young people in sexuality education." End quote. So she fully owns up to it right there in her own bio. She would have written that herself, you see, and she fully admits it. She admits that she is uh, in research dealing with primary education, picture books with trans characters, and then she also talks about the engagement of young people in sexuality education. 
So they're not even hiding. In fact, they're very proud of what they're doing, these people. They think that what they're doing is good. They think that what they're doing is going to help society. And they probably even think that what they're doing is going to help the children themselves as well. These people are that far gone. Now, Claire has only written one article for the conversation, which obviously I went and read, and I'd recommend you go and read it as well. There's one key section there, though, that stood out to me. Now, this is from Rethinking How We Represent Transgender Children in the Media, August 16, 2016, so about the same time that this whole controversy here in Australia erupted. And in the article, she talks about how, well, it's good that trans people are getting uh, you know, attention in the mainstream media, but we need to make sure we represent them in a, in a certain way, in a positive way, yada, yada, yada. Go and read the article for yourself, make up your own mind. But here's one part of her piece that stood out to me. Get this. Not all media representations are uniformly positive. Both the 60 Minutes and Australian Story episodes, though more so the former, engage in forms of problematic representation. For example, the 60 Minutes episode refers to Emma as trapped in the wrong body and born a boy. The first is a problem both because it pathologizes transgender people's bodies and because it ignores the effects of stigma on transgender people. The second is a problem because it asserts assigned sex as a truth, end quote. All right, now if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed a little problem with what Bartholomew has said here. She's saying that it's uh, problematic to say that Emma is trapped in the wrong body and born a boy pathologizes transgender people. In other words, it says that there's something mentally wrong with them, which obviously you can't do. And also because it asserts assigned sex as a truth. Well, let's go back to Lily Mossiano's about page on Geek Anomaly. And what do we see here? Quote, it finally came to a head a couple of years ago. All the running, all the denying, everything I had attempted to cover up finally came out. Once again, I was face to face with the fact that I was a woman trapped in the body of a man. All my years of running had finally come to an end and I did the exact opposite from what I had done all my life. I turned around and faced things. I accepted who I am and made the decision to finally do something about it, end quote. So there you have it right there. Lily Mossiano on her own about page on geeknormally.wordpress says that Once again, I was face to face with the fact that I was a woman trapped in the body of a man. Trapped in the wrong body, born a boy is problematic, according to Bartholomew. According to Mossiano, that's exactly what had happened to him or her or whatever. So if you're paying attention, you'll have noticed that Bartholomew is one of the researchers reading this book to children. The author of the book says that they're a woman trapped in a man's body, Bartholomew is saying it's wrong to say that because it pathologizes transgenderism. Can you see what's going on here? That's how insane these people are. They can't even get their own stories straight. You have got a woman, an academic, Bartholomew, reading out to children or giving to children books, five and six-year-old children, books about men really being women, women being men, transgenderism, this is totally normal, etc. You've also got Bartholomew writing an article for the conversation for an adult audience saying that you can't say that it's uh, women trapped in men's bodies or vice versa because that pathologizes transgenderism. It makes it sound like there's something wrong with it when there isn't. But the author of the book that she's promoting to children, the author does the same thing. We are living in a madhouse. And again, If you're a good person with a conscience who knows right from wrong, you know that there's something very wrong here right now. And you know that things are getting worse. This is only ramping up this kind of nonsense. And you know deep down you have to do something about it. You might be wondering, well, what can you do? Again, I'll come to that towards the end of the video. But you have to get it straight in your mind right now. This shit is wrong. There are five and six-year-old children being subjected to this nonsense right now. Now, if their parents are too stupid to do anything about it, if their teachers are too stupid or too indoctrinated to see that there's an issue here, and if the rest of society are so numbed by television and drugs and alcohol and all kinds of other things that are poisoning their minds and poisoning their bodies, if they're all too numb to do anything about it, it doesn't make it okay for you to do nothing. If you are a good, moral person, there's something wrong here, and little children are the victims of this nonsense, but I'm not even finished. You see, Bartholomew was only one of the people involved in this 
giving the five and six year old children this transgender nonsense. There was another guy. His name was Dr. Damien W. Riggs. And this is his own personal website. What do you notice here? This is his own personal website, Dr. Damien W. Riggs. And he's a psychotherapist, apparently. And the image he has on his own homepage, what do you see here? Some of you will be saying, well, I just see a psychotherapist or a psychologist and a, and a lady on the bed, that's all I see. Those of you who've looked into Sigmund Freud and the entire field of psychology, psychotherapy, and related fields like psychiatry, you might be seeing something more here. Uh, we're not dealing with uh, very well people, in my opinion. In fact, we're dealing with people who are at best perverted and uh, at worst outright charlatans. And I'll give you some more evidence uh, to verify my case. This is from genderidentityaustralia.com. And uh, there you go, you can see it there, genderdiversityaustralia.com, a portal for the latest research findings and projects. Who is Damien Riggs? Well, let's read his about, shall we? Quote, my name is Damien Riggs. I am a non-indigenous, cisgendered man who is the parent of four children and who lives in Adelaide, South Australia, on the lands of the corner people, and I acknowledge their sovereignty as First Nations people. I'm a lecturer and researcher at Flinders University, South Australia. I also undertake private practice work as a psychotherapist. Over the past five years, I've specialized in working with transgender clients in my practice, and I've also taught on transgender issues. For the past two years and through consultation with community groups, I have begun a program of research focusing on the experiences of Australian transgender people. This complements my previous research that has more broadly focused on issues of gender identity across a range of populations, end quote. So what do you, what do you know? This guy runs a psychotherapy practice dealing with people who think or may be able to be convinced to think that they're a man in a woman's body or a woman in a man's body or what have you. These people, they go to psychotherapists like Dr. Damien Riggs, and what do you know? He's also one of the people involved in getting these books read to children, five and six-year-old children. What do you know? So there you have Damien Riggs, Gender Diversity Australia on the website, all the links provided in the info box below. There you've got his personal website, and what's his uh, banner? What's his image, his key image banner? There you've got your uh, Sigmund Freud-like psychotherapist standing above the demure innocent lady lying on a couch wondering why she's unhappy with her life well don't worry he'll tell you uh, why you're not happy with your life and if you think he's telling you anything to help yourself you've been watching too much television let's look at one more little piece of evidence i've got on our friend damien riggs here which is his flinders university webpage. and there he is this is a real photo of him a little bit different to his uh, website uh, blog banner what have you and uh, yeah, here he says that after completing his PhD, he undertook a three-year ARC-funded postdoctoral fellowship before commencing in his role as a lecturer in the discipline of social work at Flinders. He's currently the president of the Australian Critical Race and Whiteness Studies Association and the national convener of the Australian Psychological Society's Interest Group on Gay and Lesbian Issues and the editor of its journal, The Gay and Lesbian Issues and Psychology Review. His qualifications are a Bachelor of Behaviour Science from Flinders, Bachelor of Social Science Psychology Honours from CSU, and a PhD from the University of Adelaide. So this guy isn't just some random guy either, okay? He's the president of the Australian Critical Race and Whiteness Studies Association, the national convener of the Australian Psychological Society's Interest Group on Gay and Lesbian Issues, and the editor of its journal, The Gay and Lesbian Issues Psychology Review. Now, I think I've covered enough in this video for you to see that it's not hard to identify who these people are and what their interests are. Now, what is it that led Dr. Damien Riggs to first get into a Bachelor of Behaviour Sciences? And what is it that led him to excelling in that field, going into postgraduate uh, study? becoming a doctor, becoming an associate professor, and taking part in these studies. What is it that originally got him into all of this? I don't pretend to know. Uh, and in later videos, I will talk about the origins of psychology and people like Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis, things like uh, Alfred Kinsey, and these other perverts who were taken seriously by people like Dr. Damien Riggs as uh, men to look up to, we can only surmise. 
All you need to know is that here in Australia, there are five and six year old children who are being read by people they look up to, by their teachers or by people who work with these kinds of clowns. They're coming into their classrooms and they're reading them these books about men turning into women, women turning into men, and about it all being very normal. Those books are written by this person. This person, if you read their own about page, fully admits to being a very troubled individual. Not only that, she also fully admits that she wants to educate the children and she doesn't want to get involved in discussions with people like me or anybody else. She calls us extremists or radicals. And you too, if you don't support all this, you're an extremist or a radical. She says we have to teach the children that it's perfectly normal for boys to want to be girls or girls to want to be boys. Perfectly normal. The people who disagree with that, they're radicals or extremists. Okay, And this is the author of that book, Lily Mossiano. Okay, Flinders University, who were responsible for getting these people into these uh, schools and reading this book to these innocent children. If you go through their inclusive language guide, it's pretty clear what's going on here, especially if you've read the work of George Orwell. There are things you're allowed to say and things you're not allowed to say in 2016. This is Newspeak. Then we look at the people who took part in the study, in particular, Claire Bartholome, who openly admits that she uh, wants to use uh, picture books with trans and gender diverse characters. And she openly admits she wants to do that as part of talking about sexuality with young people here in Australia. She writes an article saying that there are certain ways you're not allowed to speak, which obviously is a big part of all of this, as we saw with that Flinders University page. There are certain ways you're not allowed to speak because it pathologizes transgenderism. It makes it sound like there's something wrong with them. Of course, the book that she's promoting is written by someone who does the exact same thing. That's how just out of their minds these people are. Do they even realize their own hypocrisy? They probably don't. These people, to me, are insane. I'll say it right now. To me, these people are insane. Putting aside the harm they're doing to children, just looking at these people for who they are, to me, it's insanity. But hey, some people think that I'm insane for doing the research that I do. So uh, insanity is insanity. That's not really the problem. The problem is what they're doing to children. Okay, then we go further and we look at who she worked with. A guy named Damien Riggs describes himself as a cisgendered man. I mean, if you're over the age of 30 and you're not involved in academia, you probably don't even know what this term cisgender means. Well, guess what? An entire cohort of children are being brought up. They know what it means. And if you're not already cast out as a radical and extremist, it's only a matter of time until you will be because this is the kind of nonsense that's being taught to children today. We find out a little bit more about Dr. Damien Riggs. We look at his website. There's an image there. If you've studied Freud, if you've studied Kinsey, if you've studied psychoanalysis, psychotherapy, psychiatry, you know what this image is. If you haven't studied those things, stay tuned to my channel because obviously I'm going to start putting out some material about this. This is just getting ridiculous. Openly admits that he's a psychotherapist. Openly admits that he deals with people who are having gender identity problems. You know, maybe people who when they were five or six were told that boys aren't really boys or girls aren't really girls. Yeah, those are the kind of people that he deals with 10, 15, 20 years down the track when they come into his practice. And yeah, there you have it. Uh, he's not just any random dude. He's also very prominent, it would seem, in gay and lesbian circles in the academic world. So I know this has been a long video and I know that uh, for a lot of people, it's hard to pay attention to a video like this for more than five or 10 minutes. People's attention spans have been uh, significantly cut down by things like television and Twitter and, and all those kinds of things. And a lot of what I'm talking about here, it can be difficult to want to follow. It's like, well, hey, this is happening. What can we do about it? You know, it's, it's almost like bad news. The good news is though, that there's plenty that we can do about it starting by identifying who these people are and what they're doing. Now, I've identified a couple of people for you, Associate Professor Damien Riggs and Claire Bartholome. There's two people that have identified, and I've also given you some information on their backgrounds, on who they claim to be, what they claim to be doing. And I've also gone into more detail about their work, in particular, the details of the author that they're promoting to five and six-year-old children. You can't fix a problem until you identify it. Now, uh, this uh, Dr. Damien Wiggs and Claire Bartholome, they're only two individuals, okay? They're not at the root of the problem. They're much closer to a symptom of the problem. 
But in beginning your investigation, you might start with characters like these. Now, there was a big controversy here in Australia when this got reported in the Rupert Murdoch mainstream press. And of course, a lot of people will read it in the Murdoch press. They'll read the false dialectic between the uh, researchers, the academics, the progressives, and then the Australian Christian lobby and the extreme right. They'll read the dialectic. They won't look any further for themselves. They won't understand just how deep this nonsense goes. But you do now understand. I've provided all the links in the info box below and at johnthebond.com. You can double check all of this for yourself. Get your head around what's really going on here. And once you do that, then you can start to come up with your own solutions as to what you might be able to do. Can one person stop this being done to children? Obviously not. However, one person can have an influence on those who are around them. So if you have any brothers or sisters in your family or any nieces and nephews who are having children, it might be worth starting up a conversation about this. Do you know what's being taught in schools? What do you think about it? I get the impression a lot of people are oblivious about what's being taught at universities and about what's being taught at school. And oftentimes just getting a conversation going with people, especially parents, can be a good first step. If you were to speak to a parent, if they were to hear all of what I've just said and they were to say, I don't mind if little Billy or little Sarah get taught by one of these charlatans that they might be a boy or a girl and, you know, it's on a Modern Family on TV. Okay, well, there's not, obviously not much you can do for that person. But I don't think the majority of people in Australia are that far gone. Some of them are, don't get me wrong. Some people watch that much television and uh, have done that much university study that they fully believe in all of this nonsense and they're quite happy to teach five and six-year-old children that boys and girls are the same or there's no difference or a boy can be a girl or who knows, what have you. They're quite happy to have books read to children written by people like Lily Mossiano, who openly admits what a troubled individual that she is. They're, they're, they're happy with all that, sure. But I think they're a minority. I think if more people really knew what was going on, who was behind it, some of these characters, the things they openly admit to, it'd be a different response. What I'm trying to say is that the, the controversy that you see on the Australian newspaper or on the project on Channel 10 or what have you, it's false. It's, like a, it's almost like a red herring. They'll show you a... They'll, they'll sort of release the red herring and you'll go off on that and you'll forget about it. You won't bother to do the digging in and see well, how far this really goes. And so hopefully by me making this video, by you watching this video, by you doing your own research, there's now one more person in the world, one more person here in Australia especially, who understands what's being done. And if I can transmit this information to you, then you can transmit it to others. And how many people do you think would have to be aware of what's happening here for it to cause a genuine controversy? I don't pretend to have the answers, but what I'm trying to suggest to all of you is that knowledge is power. You've now got more knowledge thanks to this video. If you go and double check all the links I provide, you'll have more knowledge again. If you go and do your own research, you'll have more knowledge again. And then it's simply a matter of transmitting that information to others. And that can be as simple as getting a conversation going, asking people, do you really think it's okay that five and six year old children are being read books written by this person? Do you really think that's okay? Just get the conversation going. It has been a really long video. I want to say thanks to all of you. I've been wanting to cover this topic for some time now, especially with regards to safe schools, but there's so many other topics I want to cover as well and other topics that I personally find more interesting. But this, this video I had to make, it's not so much about whether it's interesting or not, it's about this is important and there's almost nobody in this entire country, a population supposedly of about 25 million people, there's almost nobody I know who's speaking out against this in the way that I am, providing their references, providing their links, giving some background context to the information. So uh, I have to do this. I have to make videos like this, and I think I've got to make a few more as well. This way, if in 10 years things are even worse, and they're teaching children, I mean, what can't, think about this logically, people. What do you, once you start teaching boys, five-year-old and six-year-old children, that a boy isn't really a boy, a girl isn't really a girl, and you get people openly admitting they want to have discussions about sexuality with children in primary schools, and these people are at universities, by the way, what do you think comes next, okay? We got to this point very quickly. What do you think comes next? And if that's going to happen regardless, if you're one of those defeatist, oh, there's nothing we can do, you know, they've got full control. If you're one of those people, don't you at least want to be able to say, well, I tried to do something. You know, I tried to get information out to people. I tried to speak to people. I tried to make videos, write blogs, what have you. I tried to do something. Wouldn't you rather be able to say, well, I tried to do something uh, rather than just sit there and be defeatist? For me, it's very easy. Like I said at the start of this video, if you're a good person, a moral person, what have you, 
you'll try and do something, whatever that something is. And if you're currently spending more time watching the Olympics or watching television shows or playing video games, than doing research and transmitting information to other people, you need to have a good hard look at yourself because there are innocent five and six year old children being indoctrinated with shit written by people like this. And uh, there's nothing that those children can do about it. There is something that you can do about it. And it's about time more of us started doing something about it. So on the 19th of August, 2016, John Le Bon signing off. And until next time, you guys take care of yourselves.